AppRite is a secure open source backend server for web, mobile and Flutter developers and we are going to check it out in this video. AppRite is an open source backend as a service platform similar to Firebase and Superbase. What makes it different from those services is that it only has self-hosted version at the time of making this video and the cloud version that you can pay for is coming soon. Superbase also has a self-hosted version but from what I understand it's kind of a pain to set up. I didn't try it so maybe take this with a grain of salt and be sure to correct me in the comments. AppRite on the other hand is super easy to set up locally using Docker and that's not all, it also has a one-click install on DigitalOcean which I'm going to show you in this video. One more big difference when comparing it to Superbase is that AppRite wraps around NoSQL database while Superbase is connected to a Postgres database. So if you are choosing between these two, keep that in mind because if you need relational database AppRite is not going to be for you. At the time of making this video AppRite is in version 0.14.2 but it has a great feature set comparable to Superbase. It has a database, it can handle your storage using buckets, it has user section which is actually authentication with more than 20 providers, it has cloud functions out of the box with more than 15 runtimes, it has great set of SDKs for the most popular languages and platforms including Flutter, Android, iOS, Kotlin, Python, PHP and of course JavaScript which I'm going to show you in this video. SDK is super simple to use and you can also install one instance of AppRite but have it run multiple projects. You would usually use AppRite to create your own backend because even if AppRite looks like a CMS on the first glance and you can add data to your database from its admin area, it's still miles away from something like Directus or WordPress which have a lot of components that can make actual editing of your content and data in your app enjoyable experience. AppRite is just going to serve as a backend to your backend and it will allow you to easily read and write data, authenticate users and provide you with cloud functions and storage system. But not much else, so keep that in mind and you know, read the documentation. In this video I'm going to show you how to set up AppRite locally first, but for the demo we are going to actually be using DigitalOcean's one-click setup of AppRite. I'm going to show you how to quickly get the data from the database, how to register and log in users and also how to create protected pages on your site which only authenticated users can access. This is going to be super simple using AppRite's JavaScript SDK. For the front end, I will of course be using Next.js, but you can use any framework you like. To get started locally, first install Docker Desktop on your machine if you don't already have it. Once you have it installed, just copy the command from the model you get when you click on Get Started button on App Right Site. Paste that command in your terminal, wait a bit, answer a few questions, and you're good to go. Visit HTTP localhost in your browser, and you should be greeted with App Right's account creation screen. However, for this demo I'm going to be using DigitalOcean's one-click install. If you want to follow along with me, you can sign up using my affiliate link and get 100 bucks of credit for three months. So you can play with AppRite there or with any other technology you like. The link will be in the description below. And I think it's the easiest way to get started with AppRite, but local setup is just fine if you want to just test it out locally. Once you sign up for DigitalOcean account, you can click on Create button to create a droplet, then go to Marketplace and search for AppRite. Click on it, choose any droplet you like, but I suggest you don't go for the cheapest one. I'll choose the one for 12 bucks a month with premium Intel chip. After that you can choose a region for your data center, choose something closest to you, since I'm in Croatia I will choose the one in Frankfurt. I will choose SSH key as my authentication method but you can choose root password if you don't know how to use SSH or you don't want to be bothered with it. Change host name to something like AppRite and then click create droplet. Now we wait for a minute or two for our droplet to be created. Once this is done you will see AppRite logo and get started text click on that and then quick access to AppRite. If you get site can't be reached error, don't worry, wait for a few more minutes and try to refresh the page. This is because AppRite needs a few minutes to get set up on your droplet. When you refresh the page after a few minutes you should be greeted with a sign up page on which you can create your admin user. Add your data and click sign up and that's it, we are ready to start creating our application. First of all let's change the theme. 
Okay, better. Now let's create our first project. Name your project however you want. I will call mine Movie Database. On this page, you can see all the features that AppWrite comes with the database, storage, users, and functions. Users also contain authentication methods that you can use with AppWrite. We are going to authenticate with username and password in this video. Let's go to the database and create our first collection. I will name mine Movies. On this page, you can set read and write permissions either on your collection level or if you want more granular control on document level. I'm going to set read access to be roll all so that everyone can read our documents. Documents are items in your database that are made up of attributes. If you now go to documents, you will actually see create attribute instead of create document button because you need at least one attribute for your documents. So let's create some. There are a few attribute types, string, integer, boolean, and so on, all the usual suspects. Let's add a string attribute and give it an ID of title. The size is going to be 100. Now click create button. Now I'll add one more, this time of type integer, and I'm going to call this one year. So our movies are going to have a title and a year. We have two attributes now, so that means that we can create a few documents. So the title of my document will be Big Lebowski and the year is going to be 1998. Know that under permissions, you can add read and write access for that specific document. So that is cool. Let's add few more movies or, you know, documents. Okay, so now we got our first project set up. Now we just need to click on home link and click platform so that we can use AppWrite SDK in our Next.js app. Click add platform and choose new web app. For the name, we can just write movie database again. For host name, you actually need to add URL to your site that is going to be using AppWrite's API. We are just going to add wildcard for now so that we can access it from anywhere, including our local host. In production, of course, you want to restrict access so that only your web app can use it. And with that, we are done with our demo setup of AppWrite. Let's now quickly create a simple web app that will get our movies or documents and allow us to authenticate our users. I'm using Next.js for this demo with only Tailwind installed. To create the same setup, you can just install Next with Yarn Create Next app and the name of your project and then follow simple instructions on Tailwind page. If you want to automatically install Next and Tailwind together with just one line, you can run Yarn Create Next app dash dash example with Tailwind CSS, name of your project, but be aware that this is going to install Next.js with TypeScript support. So if you don't want to use TypeScript, go with the first example. To install AppWrite SDK for web, just run yarn add AppWrite in the root of your app. But we are also going to add UUID package because we are going to need it later on. Nice. Now let's just add .env.local to the root of our project and add endpoint project ID and collection ID in it. Endpoint is the URL of your site plus slash v1. You can find project ID by going home and then clicking settings. Here you can copy your project ID. For the collection ID, go to the database, click on movies and then settings. You can copy collection ID from here. Now just copy and paste all those variables and prefix them with next public so that we have access to them in the browser. And that is it. We can start developing. In index.jsx, import app rights so that we can use the SDK. And after that, we are going to get our movies in get server side props. But you can also do it the same way on client side. There is no need for fetch, axios, and so on. SDK is going to handle all of that for us. First, we new up app right and just call it SDK. Then we define our endpoint and project from the data that we save in .env.local. We are going to use those two lines before everything we do with AppWrite SDK. For the purposes of this demo, I'm going to always add them, but for the project in production, it would make more sense to create a React hook for that or some function that you can reuse. Then we want to list documents from our collection. And as you can see, AppWrite SDK is very simple and intuitive. You just say list documents and pass in the collection you want to list the documents from and then wait for the response. 
If we get the response, we return it, otherwise we return an error. We await for the response to resolve and pass it to the props of our component. Now we just pass movies prop to our component and then we can map over it and display the title and the year of the movie. I also added link component that is going to link our movie to the URL of movies ID of the movie, which is going to show detailed view for all of our movies. And that is it. If we take a look at our home page, we should see a list of movies. To link our movie to the movie details page, we first create movies folder under pages and in it I will create id.jsx file since we are going to get our movie by id. In get server side props, we are going to pass in ctx or context and then we are going to use that context to get the id of the movie that we want to show. After that, we just initialize app write SDK like we did on the index page. To get the document, it's very simple. You can just use get document method, pass in collection ID from .env.local and the ID of the movie that we got from context. Now we just wait for the response and then send it to our props property. We receive that property in our component through props and then just add the movie.title to the title tag in head component and also display the title of the movie on the page. And below it we can display the year in a span tag. Now on our home page when we click the movie we should get to the URL movies slash ID of the movie and we should get the title and the year of that movie. Details page for the movie, done. To register users, first we need to create register.jsx page, import AppWrite of course and also import UUID because we are going to need that to generate an ID for the user. On this page we also have a simple form with an email and password fields and of course a button for submitting the form. At the bottom we are going to display the errors if we get any. Nice thing about AppWrite is that it has server-side validation that you can use on your front-end. I will show you how in a few moments. And don't worry, all of this code is going to be available for you on GitHub, the link will be in the description below. And of course, our form has a submit method that is going to call handle submit when the user clicks the button. Now let's create a state for handling our errors. After that, we are of course going to initialize AppWrite SDK. Now just create handle submit method. In it we first prevent default of course so that our page doesn't reload and then we just use sdk method account.create and in it pass in the id generated by uuid, email and password from our form. Then we just console log the response but if we get an error we want to set error with the method from use state hook. That error is going to be displayed below the form and that is it. Let's test it out. Go to the register route and try to write some random string in the email field. You will get invalid email while you must be a valid email addresser. Okay, now add an email address like john at doe.com, but add just three characters for the password. Now you will get invalid password. Password must be at least eight characters. So as you can see, validation works. Let's now add a password that is at least eight characters long and click sign up. Nothing will happen since we didn't code anything to happen, but if we go to our admin area under users, we should see our new user. Click on the user and add a name for it since we didn't send the name in our request and then click update. We registered our first user, now we can create a login page. To login users, we pretty much do the same thing like we did when registering users. Create login.jsx page. In it, we have almost the same setup with a form handling submit and we are using use state to display errors. And I'm also going to initialize next router so that we can send the user to the user area if the login is successful. In handle submit, we need to use account create session method to which we will send an email and password from the form. And this is going to create a session for our user. Now if we get response with the user ID, we want to push the user to the user area page, otherwise we want to set the error and display it, just like we did on the register page. Let's test this out. Try to log in with invalid credentials and you will get invalid credentials error. But if you use the right credentials uh, of the user we just created, uh, we should be redirected to the user area page. Of course, this is going to produce an error because there is no user area page yet. Let's create one now. 
First of course, let's create user area.js6 inside of our pages folder. In it, uh, I will just add the text that is going to say hello and the name of the user. Then I'll just add a simple, this is an authenticated page paragraph. And below that, I will add a logout button that is going to trigger a logout method once somebody clicks on it. Okay, now we need to add some logic to make all of this work. I'm going to set two states. First is going to be user and in it we will set the user's data so that we can display it. And after that I will set is authenticated state so that we can check if the user is authenticated. Also, we wanna initialize next router so that we can redirect users that are not authenticated. After that, we initialize app write, of course, like in all the previous examples. Now I want to get the session for the current user and wait for the response. If we get current property in the response, then we wanna set authenticated to be true. But if we get error.code with the code of 401, which is the code for unauthorized request, we are going to push the user to the login page. After that, we're going to use use effect, which is going to depend on the is authenticated state. And when that state changes, we are going to try to get the account details for the current user with account get method. We don't need to send anything to that method because AppWrite as the case is going to try to get the data for the user from the session we created when logging in. Now we wait for the response and if we get it, we set user state to be that response. And we can just cons log out any errors we get. In the logout method, we use account delete sessions method to delete all user sessions. And then we just push the user to the homepage if the request was successful. Otherwise, we can log any errors we may get. Lastly, we are checking if the user is not authenticated and returning blank page if that is the case. We do this because otherwise we would get flash of the page that the user is not supposed to see if they are not authenticated until all other logic is run, which is just a fraction of a second, but it is visible. And this should be it. Let's test this out. Now, when you log in with correct credentials, you should be redirected to the user area page, which we now have. Uh, you can see the name of the user after hello text. And if you click log out button, you should be redirected to the home page. And now if you try to manually go to the user area page, you will be automatically redirected to the login page. And there you have it. In a few minutes, we displayed our documents and built a simple authentication system. Of course, AppWrite offers much more functionality than what I showed in the last few minutes. We haven't even touched cloud functions, storage and webhooks. For that, you will need to check out AppWrite's documentation, which is always a nice thing to do. But as you can see, AppWrite SDK is very simple and straight to the point. So implementing more complex functionality to your app or website should not be much of a challenge. So this has been it for this video. Remember everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.